Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another one of our Seven Star Terror Raid build videos. Um, as of a little bit ago, I think last night is when I first saw it, um, Pokemon Company has announced that the next Seven Star Raid is going to be another starter, another water type starter. Of course, we have Feraligator. Feraligator, of course, is a water type Pokemon typically, <clears throat> which changes completely with its terror type being dark. Um, obviously, that's going to make it have crunch. That's almost guaranteed. Like, that's already a big for alligator move. It having terror type dark means crunch is a guarantee on its moveset, I want to say. So we've got it up on the list. <laughs> we'll get to that in just a sec first. Let's talk over its uh, potential abilities. Torrent is one of the abilities it has. That's its typical starter ability. But I think this Pokemon is going to be running sheer force. A lot of these Pokemon have run their hidden ability. I think, like, all except, like, Dondozo, I want to say. And, of course, sheer force actually gives for alligator a pretty big power boost here. So I, I can guarantee that's what it's going to run. Um, obviously, Crunch is going to be its number one uh, move on that list. Terror type Dark opens that up for some nice extra damage. Ice Fang, Waterfall are also very good moves that this Pokemon ha can have, both with additional effects, which are negated by Sheer Force, and instead the power of the move is boosted. That's what Sheer Force does, I should have mentioned. Sheer Force negates potential uh, bonuses to moves like flinch chances, stuff like that, um, and instead increases, <clears throat> increases the power by a little bit. So I think this Pokemon is going to be running a lot of moves with secondary effects that we won't actually ever see have the secondary effects applied, but instead we'll see it in the actual damage it does. Um, of course, Crunch actually falls into that too with the defense drop that Crunch normally has. Um, instead, we're just going to get a little bit of extra damage. Again, same with Ice Fang and Waterfall. Superpower, I can see this Pokemon running. Um, my Feraligator back uh, when I played through Pokemon Hard Gold, I remember having Superpower, so I, I was immediately through on this list knowing how powerful it was. I can see it going for one of those and then clearing uh, stat changes either at the start of the battle or like at the midway point when it puts its Terra Shield up. Just to maybe take something out that it was given giving it some trouble. Otherwise, Bulldoze, Shadow Claw, Psychic Fangs, and Earthquake are great coverage options that this Pokemon gets that I can also see it running. <clears throat> Aqua Tail is on there, just in case for whatever reason they want to give it another water type move. We've also got Dragon Ants in case it wants to set up and rock slide for a little bit of extra coverage in those little honorable honorable mentions move section there. This Pokemon has a lot of very good coverage options and a lot of just uh, high high damage output that you need to be prepared for. Um, so all our, all our builds take that into account, so I wouldn't be too worried about it, assuming you build one of these Pokemon pretty well, um, either from this video or, uh, you know, taking some inspiration and building some stuff on your own. I always support doing that. You know, it's, it's cool to see some Pokemon that you wouldn't have expected to see uh, perform well in raids otherwise. <clears throat> As a pure dark type Pokemon, as this Pokemon is going to be, um, it's going to be weak to Bug, Fairy, and Fighting. Some pretty good options uh, in those three types there, of course. Fairy and Fighting being some really, really high damage output types. We've got some good Bug Pokemon too. This Pokemon will be in Terror Raid starting on November 1st and running to November 3rd. And then once again from November 8th to November 10th. So we've got uh, the same kind of thing. we got two weekends there. So if you don't get it the first weekend, just head back the first, second weekend. Now is actually a great time to kind of prepare for this. Um, there's going to be some five-star Gengars in raids that drop some extra rare candy. So if you need to level up your Pokemon for these terror raids, now is a perfect opportunity to grind for those candies. I definitely recommend doing it if you've got some free time in your hand and want to get some raids done. Um, but again, this Pokemon will be coming around early November, so be ready for that. Um, day after Halloween for those celebrating is when this Pokemon will first hit raids. So, you know, get home, eat all your candy, and take on the seven-star for alligator. It could be a fun way to spend your night. And <laughs> with that being said, let's get on over to your build so you can actually beat this Pokemon. Our first one here, we've got the raid, like, <laughs> front runner, it seems. We've got Azumarill. Azumarill, of course, the water and fairy Pokemon. Its stereotype is going to be fairy, and you're going to give it the Shell Bell Hull item. This Pokemon's moves are going to be a moderately typical set. Obviously, you don't really need to worry about doing some water type damage. Even though we've got a water type damage output move there, it's not really for damage. Um, we've got Play Rough as its main damage dealing move. Um, Aqua Ring is a pretty good option to set up early on in the battle. If you want a little bit of extra passive healing, it could help you out quite a bit, especially before um, you get a Belly Drum off, you know. You can set up an Aqua Ring, then slowly heal a little bit. If you go for a Belly Drum, it'll be a little bit safer because you'll heal after every turn. It could be a better better option than just going for a straight Belly Drum. Chilling Water is a great thing to open with. It'll not only build your Terra, but it will lower the uh, Fralgator's attack stat, which is going to probably be its primary uh, damage output stat. It has a little bit of a higher attack stat than its special attack and gets a lot more uh, or a lot better physical moves than it does special moves. So I definitely think this Pokemon's going to be running primarily... Um, Physical, so Chilling Water should help a lot there. Of course, Azumarill is a physical attacker, so Huge Power is going to be its ability. It's a fantastic ability on Azumarill, and is what makes it raid viable. When it comes to its EVs, you're going to want to max out HP, max out attack, and put the last little bit in defense so it can take a hit or two a little bit better. This Pokemon's going to be the Adamant Nature, which is plus attack and minus special attack, and again, Terra type Fairy. Moving on to our next build here, we've got a pretty another uh, <laughs> another Water Fairy type. We've got Primarina here. Fairy uh, is going to be its Terra type as well. It's going to give it the Light Clay Held item, and you'll see why in just a second. We've got Reflect on this thing, which will make it so it's taking a lot less physical damage from those uh, 
torrent i almost said from this uh for alligators uh <laughs> physical water moves i don't think it's even gonna run torrent i think it's gonna run sheer force um Anyway, Moonblast is going to be its main damage output, and of course, leading with Reflect is a good idea to help your team live a little bit longer, and without Light Clay, it's going to last 8 turns instead of 5, which is a pretty nice little boost there. Chilling Water is a great way to help build up your Terra and lower for Alligator's physical attack, so I definitely recommend spamming that whenever you're not trying to get some damage across in Moonblast. If for Alligator is not at minus 6, I probably recommend pressing Chilling Water even if you do need the damage, just because that'll mean your team can stick around longer and they can deal a whole lot more damage with that. If you notice your team's getting a little low on health and you're out of cheers, just don't want to use them, we got life doing this Pokemon. It is an egg move, you have to use a little mirror herb trick to get it on it, so it's a little bit more difficult. But it should prove pretty useful in this uh, raid battle, so I recommend, recommend running it. This Pokemon's other ability, uh, which I think is called like Liquid Voice, isn't super useful at all here, so I definitely just recommend running Torrent, just so you get a little bit of extra damage on your Chilling Water if you're low at health. It's not really going to do anything, but, you know, something is better than nothing with Liquid Voice, so... Again, Terra type fairy, so that once you reach your Terra after a few chilling waters, you can start dealing a little bit more damage with those moon blasts if you need to. Um, when it comes to EVs, you want to max out HP, max out defense, and put the last little bit in a special attack so your moon blast and chilling water do slightly more. This Pokemon, of course, is going to be running light clay, like I said before, so your flex last longer. And with that being said, let's move on to our next build. We've got one of my favorite Pokemon here. We've got Caesar. I love the Caesar set. It's a pretty, pretty terrible one. I've run this one a few times. And I've shown you with this one a few times, but it works pretty well here too. Caesar, of course, being a bug and steel Pokemon, you're going to want to give it the terror type of bug and give it the Shell Bell Held item. When it comes to its moves, Fury Cutters are going to be its main damage output. If you use a bunch of Fury Cutters in a row, that damage will just keep increasing and increasing. And Caesar should be able to live a hit or two. It has a pretty high defensive stat. And you're going to max out HP and attack to make sure your damage output is the highest it can be, as well as you're able to take a couple hits before your uh, Fury Cutter damage output gets high enough to where your Shell Bell is healing it off. You might want to lead with a Swords Dance or a Focus Energy so you get that crit ratio boosted or just your attack boost in general. And Lunge is a great move to help you get to your Terra. I actually didn't notice this up until I was going through Sea Sword moves. It lowers the opponent's attack stat, which is it's just Bug-type Chilling Water, kind of. I probably recommend getting to your Terra with this, then Terrasalizing, and then starting to press the Fury Cutter. It's probably a better option. You're going to want to give this Pokemon the ability Swarm, so that Fury Cutter does a little, and Lunge does a little bit more damage if it gets low on health. Hopefully you won't ever get to that point, but that's what you want. This so thing's going to be the Adamant Nature, which is plus attack and minus special attack. And I actually forgot. Primarina, I think I want to say, is bold. Yeah, bold. I forgot to mention that before, which is up defense and minus attack. Make sure to make it that so we can live a hit or two. But back to Caesar. Actually, I think we're done with Caesar. <laughs> Terra type bug again, so your Fury Cutters do extra once you get there with those lunges to help you build your Terra. Because again, they do damage and lower attack stat. Pretty good against this for Alligator. Moving on to our next Pokemon, we've got another offensive powerhouse. We've got Corviknight here. Corviknight, of course, is a flying and steel Pokemon, and you're going to give you the Terra type of fighting. You're also going to give it the Black Belt Hell item, which will boost its fighting type moves a little bit more. And you see why now. It has Body Press as its main damage output. Reflect is there for a great way to start the battle to make it so your team's taking a little bit less damage from those for alligators. A powerful physical moves. You set up a ref Reflect and you're already taking way less. Then you might want to set up an Iron Defense or two. Build up your defensive stat. Maybe Roost if you're feeling a little low on health and then start pressing some pretty high damage Body Press. Of course, it's going to be super effective. You already ha have a pretty high defensive stat and you're going to be hitting super effective. I think I already mentioned that. And once you get to Terra... You get even that boost too. This Pokemon will live quite a few hits from this for Alligator, and the more Iron Defense is the better. If you set up a Reflect, it's even better. And maybe your team can use Chilling Water or something, and then all of a sudden, you're taking no damage from this for Alligator and dealing a whole bunch back with Body Press. Mirror Armor is probably this Pokemon's only great ability. I don't really think for Alligator is going to run anything that's going to interact with Corv Knight's abilities, but I guess Mirror Armor is the highest likelihood. Like maybe if uh, for Alligator runs some sort of like. I don't know, scary face, I guess, maybe. <laughs> it's not super prominent, but it might. Um, you're going to max out this Pokemon's HP, max out its defense for this high damage body presses. And your last four points you can kind of do with whatever you want. I just kind of put it in speed because I was like, maybe then I'll be able to outspeed for Alligator. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not anyway, but you can kind of do whatever you want with it. Not really super useful here, believe it or not. And this Pokemon is going to be the Impish Nature, which is plus defense and minus special attack. Your main uh, like goal with this Pokemon is to set up a few Iron Defenses, press or reflect so that your team's not taking damage first, and then Roost if you need to, and again, just start Body Pressing, you're going to be dealing a whole lot of damage. You will you might need to Roost or Heal Cheer every now and then, but you should probably be fine considering this Pokemon has such a high defensive stat, and your whole point is you're boosting it anyway. Um, and again, Impish Nature for this Pokemon. Moving on to our next build, we've got the Man of the Hour, Iron Hands. Iron Hands, of course, is a Fighting and Electric type Pokemon, and we going to give you the Terra type of Fighting here. You're going to want to give the Scope Lens held item, and of course, I'm sure all of you know what this moveset's going to be. Drain Punch, Electric Train, Focus Energy, Belly Drum. Probably don't need to explain it, but of course, you're going to want to lead with the Focus Energy to help boost your crit ratio with the Scope Lens. It's going to make it almost guaranteed crits every time. Electric Train's a great option. If you notice, there's plenty of other Iron Hands on the field, and you want to give them a nice boost. Belly Drum is what really creep, uh, makes your attack kind of creep up, um, and 
you know, start doing a whole lot of damage with those Drain Punches, which you should be healing back. Because, again, you're using Drain Punch, so you're fine. Pokemon's only ability is Quark Drive, so that's where you're going to want to run on it. And you're wanting to give it the Adamant Nature, which is plus attack and minus special attack. Pretty typical raid build here. I feel like I don't need to go too much into it. And with that, let's move on to our last one, our probably most fun build. This is probably the one I'm going to try to run. We got Malamar here. Malamar is a Dark and Psychic type Pokemon. And you're going to give the Terror type of Fighting. You're going to give the Shovel Held at him. When we get over to its moves, you'll see why we want that ter weird Terror type. We've got Superpower as this Pokemon's main damage output. With the ability Contrary, Superpower actually, instead of lowering your attack and defense, boosts it every time you use it, which is pretty good considering, you know, you're just going to snowball while you're hitting super effective damage with a high base power Fighting type move. It's going to be super effective. So, pretty great option there. Reflect is a great option to make sure your team can last. Malamar's not super bulky either, so having that little bit of extra uh, defense will help a lot. And you're going to give it lunge to help me help you get to Terra. Although superpower, maybe maybe go for like two lunges and a superpower, then you're at Terra, and then start really pressing superpower. I'd say. And sunny days on here in case you know for alligators going for some heavy heavy damage water type moves. It's a great way to make it. You know, maybe stop that. <laughs> Deal a little bit less damage to those water moves. Contrary is, is very important on this Pokemon. Make sure it is contrary, or this set will not work at all. When it comes to EVs, you want to give it 252 in HP, which is maxing it out. And then you want to put 164 points into attack and 92 into defense to make sure it can deal a lot of damage while still being able to take a hit or two. Because again, Alomar isn't super bulky. And until, you know, your team starts to really make for alligators attack lower with either Reflex, Chilling Water, or Lunges, you're going to be taking quite a bit of damage. So you want to make sure you can limit that as much as possible with a little bit of defensive investment. This Pokemon is going to be the Adamant Nature, which is plus attack and my special attack. And again, Terra type fighting is pretty important on this Pokemon. And with that being said, those are all our raid builds for you guys here today. I hope you guys found one that really speaks to you and that you want to run against this Terra for Alligator. I'm looking forward to this raid. I don't think it's going to be too bad. Honestly, I think it's going to be kind of easy, especially compared to the last couple, which have been a little bit difficult for me. So I hope you guys are excited. Hope to see you guys out there in early November. And uh, good luck. Hope to see you guys in those Terra raid dens. And have a good night.